In this video, the Dutch bricklayers will take you through their activities of the past week. We will be performing various tasks such as drilling, insulating, bricklaying, and spawning. If you have any comments or feedback on our work, please don't hesitate to let us know. We drill our holes with a diameter of 6 millimeters. Once the holes are drilled, we insert our sleeve anchors into them. This ensures that the anchors we are going to install will be securely fastened. After the anchors are in place, we use an impact attachment on our drill to tighten the anchors. Of course, there are alternative methods as well, such as using a hammer with an impact attachment, a striking pipe. After successful drilling and securing all our anchors, it's time to begin the insulation installation. It's important to use the appropriate protective gear, including gloves, to prevent potential itching from the insulation, as demonstrated in the video. We position the caps with the pointed end facing upward, as indicated on the caps themselves with the top label. Dutch masons, often referred to as metselaars in Dutch, are skilled artisans who specialize in the art of bricklaying and masonry work. They play a crucial role in the construction and restoration of buildings throughout the Netherlands. Here are some key points about Dutch masons. Craftsmanship and tradition. Dutch masons have a rich tradition of craftsmanship that has been passed down through generations. They take great pride in their work and are known for their attention to detail and precision in bricklaying. High quality materials. In the Netherlands, masons often work with high quality bricks and building materials sourced from local suppliers. These materials are chosen for their durability and ability to withstand the Dutch climate. Architectural heritage. The Netherlands boasts a rich architectural heritage with historic buildings and structures that require ongoing maintenance and restoration. Dutch masons are often involved in the preservation and restoration of these landmarks using traditional techniques to maintain historical accuracy. Contemporary construction, in addition to restoration work, Dutch masons are also involved in modern construction projects contributing to the development of new buildings, homes, and infrastructure across the country. Training and education. Becoming a Dutch Mason typically involves formal training and apprenticeships. Aspiring Masons learn the principles of bricklaying, mortar mixing, and the use of specialized tools. They also gain knowledge of safety protocols and building regulations. As seen here in the video, we always maintain the mason's line at a minimum distance from the brick. We aim to prevent the brick from touching the line, as this can result in the masonry not being laid flat. Safety and environmental standards. Dutch masons prioritize safety and adhere to strict environmental standards. They use eco-friendly building practices and materials whenever possible. Dutch masons often use tubs in combination with their mortar. In other countries, boards or plates are sometimes used. Often, people from other countries don't find our tubs suitable. Let us know what your opinion is on this. To scoop up the mortar, a trowel is often used. Alternatively, a shovel may be used. Nowadays, we are increasingly using a cordless mixer, which helps reduce strain on our wrists and makes the work less physically demanding. As we get older, we hope to encounter fewer issues with this approach. In combination with the bricks we are laying in this video, it is ideal to use a dry masonry saw. The saw in our video is equipped with a dust extraction system, which immediately removes the dust. 
This allows us to cut our bricks dry and process them right away. This helps us avoid any potential co. With a wet saw, it's sometimes not possible to process the bricks immediately. The bricks we are laying in the video are longer than usual, measuring approximately 240 millimeters in length. The most common bricks in the Netherlands have a length of 210 millimeters. Because the bricks we are currently laying are longer and the headers of the bricks are only 85 millimeters, we cannot use the headers as they are. We need to cut them to a size of 115 millimeters to maintain our stretcher bond pattern. We aim to maintain consistent and straight mortar joints to achieve a neat appearance. We use our level to mark the frame dimensions and maintain it as a guide for the joints, as demonstrated in this video. We also periodically check and adjust it every few layers to ensure that it remains straight. In this project, we are constructing a new section adjoining an existing one. Additionally, a portion of the existing masonry was removed in advance to make way for new masonry. As a result, certain older elements remain in place, such as older anchors and insulation. Contractor choice. We use our joint rollers to roll the masonry. The architect has opted to keep the mortar joints as shallow as possible. This decision was made because the existing building also has shallow joints. The choice of bricks in combination with the shallow mortar joints may not be ideal. Nevertheless, we are making every effort to achieve the best possible result under these circumstances. After the bricklaying and joint rolling, we use a sponge on this type of brick to achieve the best possible finish. These bricks are highly prone to staining, which is why this step is crucial. Before sponging, we always make sure to change the water. Do you ever use a sponge after bricklaying? Please let us know your thoughts on our work. We greatly appreciate your feedback. Thank you for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe.